So I looked up some interesting music theory questions on Reddit and Quora, and I'm going to answer them in this video. Why is the bass note so important? A chord is inverted when its root note is not the bass. I think this guy comes from classical music, and in classical music theory, they have very strict rules about how you can use voicings and chord inversions, and if you invert a chord, you change the bass note. But modern music theory is somewhat different, because you can use any chord inversions and the bass can still play just the root note. And answering the question why the bass is so important, it's because the bass determines the chord. It's not the keyboard, it's not the guitar, it's the bass. Because let's say the guitar player is playing the notes C, E and G. And you might say this is a C major chord, but it depends on what the bass plays. Because if the bass plays the note C, then yes, it's the C major chord, but if the bass plays the note A, then it's an A minor 7th chord, so the bass determines the chord. What instruments play what in a chord? I think this guy wants to learn how to arrange music for a jazz big band. First you need to learn extended jazz chords, and then you also need to learn shell chords. Shell chords is when you leave out some of the chord tones like the root and the perfect fifth, because the root note is played by the bass, and the fifth is not a really important chord tone. Then you need to learn how to harmonize a melody for two voices, three voices, four voices, five voices, and six voices, because sometimes they use six voice harmonizations in big bands. And there are also advanced harmonization techniques like drop two and drop four. Drop two is when you drop the second voice from the top, an octave lower. The next step is to learn the ranges of the different instruments, like trombones are playing lower and trumpets are playing higher. And if you are really serious about this, I recommend this book, The Complete Arranger, because this is a really good book to learn how to arrange to a jazz big band. This is quite a heavy book with a lot of pages, but it's a really good one. How to understand intervals? Am I tone deaf? My teacher said that I'm hopeless. I think your teacher is hopeless because she can't teach you how to recognize intervals, but if you can recognize a song from the radio, then you can learn how to recognize intervals because basically it's the same thing. First you need to download the app Ear Master and you need to start with the really small steps. So the first small step is recognizing only two intervals. So set the app so it can give you two intervals. Once you can recognize two intervals, you can add the third one. It's also important to be able to sing the two notes. So each time you hear an interval, try to sing the two notes. Even if you miss, try to sing the two notes and this helps you memorize and recognize it later. Another good trick to do is to connect each interval with a song, because each song, the vocal melody starts with an interval, right? For example, the song Yesterday by the Beatles starts with a major third. Yesterday, all day, day, this is a major third. So if you can find a melody for each interval, it also makes it much easier to recognize it. So practice this 10 minutes every day and you will learn how to recognize intervals just in a few weeks. Is it okay if I still have hard time writing songs? Every time I start a new song, it's always a misery to find the right melody and lyrics. It's important to realize that learning how to play a piece of music that is already written is much easier and very different from writing songs. If you have some experience, over time it becomes somewhat easier. And sometimes good ideas come really fast, but most of the time they don't come fast. Most of the time it takes several hours or several days, sometimes weeks, to find the right melody, the right rhythm, the right lyrics. And because you want to create something unique, and you want to create something that is simple enough, but also interesting enough and memorable, it takes a lot of brain power and a lot of focus, but if you want to write really good songs, you have to be comfortable with this struggle, because that's what it takes. This is from Kuora, and the question is how do I create a chord progression by myself? There are two ways you can create your own chord progressions. The first method is by using a piano or a guitar and trying out different chord combinations. Eventually you will find the right chord progressions. This is how most people write songs and this is exactly how I started to write songs. The only problem with this is that it's really slow. The second method is by writing down hundreds of chord progressions from successful songs and trying to figure out if there is a system in it. And this is exactly what I've done the past few years, and yes, there is a system in it, and this is what I teach in my songwriting course. The second method is faster because you already know what to look for. And the first method is like searching blindly in the dark. If you have any music theory questions, let me know in the comments below.